London is a very big city. Every year, a lot of people vanish and are never heard of again. That's none of my business, because I am a doctor. My name is John Watson. But one case did concern me, because it was a wealthy patient of mine who disappeared, without a trace. The whole thing began one evening, when a mysterious lady appeared at the house of Neville St. Clair. But, madam, I cannot interrupt Mr. St. Clair at dinner unless I know your name. Tell him that a friend, a very old friend, wishes to speak to him urgently. Madam? Yes, Neville. Doreen, I thought I told you never to come to my house. But Lozato has sent for you. Lozato? Tell him it's impossible for me to come now. I've done enough already. Besides, I've got guests. How can I possibly leave now? I was told to bring you. You know the consequences if you don't obey Lozato's orders. Oh, I say, old chap. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to intrude. That's quite all right, Dr. Watson. All right. Wait for me in your carriage. I must make my excuses to my guests. I shall be waiting. Mr. Holmes, you can see from what I've told you how desperately I need your help. It is now three days since my husband disappeared, and I'm beside myself with worry. And you have no knowledge of this strange woman who visited your husband? No, Mr. Holmes. Oh, I saw her for a moment when I barged into the study. She was tall and very beautiful, but uh, not out of the top drawer, you know. It is not my wish to probe into your private affairs or other intimate matters between you and your husband, but unless you are prepared to be perfectly frank on such matters, I can be of no help to you. Mr. Holmes, it's not what you imply. My husband and I are devoted to each other. He wouldn't have an affair with another woman. I did not say that, madam. But, Holmes, what else could you have meant? Mrs. Sinclair, is it not true that your husband has forbidden you to visit him at his office? Is it not true that you know nothing of his business associates, his occupation, or how he spends his time each day in the city? Yes. Yes, Mr. Holmes. I, I was ashamed to tell you. How did you know? It was a matter of simple deduction, madam. Surely any woman whose husband has disappeared would go at once to his office and speak to his business associates in an endeavor to learn of his whereabouts. Since you have no such knowledge, it is obvious that you do not know where your husband's office is, nor do you know who his associates are. The only explanation is that your husband not only has failed to tell you of his affairs, but has moreover forbidden you to learn of them. Why? I don't know. Mr. Holmes, I did go to his office. You did? And yet you concede that my deduction was correct? This is not reasonable, madam. Today I went to the office address, and I found there's no such place. Possibly you went there at the wrong time. However, I feel that if we go there at once, we may find an answer to the mystery of the office that exists, but is not there. You're right, Mrs. Sinclair, there is no 51. Watson, wait for me, and if I'm not back in 10 minutes, come to my help. Right-o. Be careful. Seeking a friend of mine, Mr. Sinclair, Mr. Neville Sinclair. Never heard of him. Or his letters? Look, mister, we don't ask questions here. It ain't healthy.
Where are we? Redmead Lane by the river. Michael. Watson, put Mrs. Sinclair in the cab and tell the cabbie to wait. Heavens, Holmes, it... It's an opium den. If your nose had been as sensitive as your eyes, you'd have known that 30 seconds ago. Good evening. I'm Luzato. The bar of gold is at your service, gentlemen. We're looking for Mr. Neville Sinclair. The name is unfamiliar. He was here only a moment ago. We saw him at the window. However, if we must search for ourselves... <laughs> Holmes! Holmes, take your pen! Holmes! Holmes! Now leave me be, you stupid! Holmes! Holmes! Cabby, the police station, and drive like blazes. Inspector, is this another one of your courtesy visits? No, Lozetta, this time it isn't a raid. I'll deal with your opium side later. At the moment, we're more interested in your upstairs room. You realize, of course, Inspector, that you cannot make a search without a written statement from your station. Right. In any case, I don't think you will find anything up there that could be of any possible interest. You. I saw Sinclair, now he's gone. Inspector, I suggest your men search the house. Certainly, Mr. Holmes. I object to this intrusion. All right, I heard you. I warn you. I don't think you quite realize the seriousness of what you're doing. You've been pretty clever up to now, Lozato. One of these days you'll go too far. My dear Inspector, I know perfectly well what my position in relation to the law is. <laughs> you'll observe, Inspector, traces of blood on the windowsill, human blood. There are also several drops on the floor which would appear to be quite fresh. And these garments are, I'm afraid, Clothes belonging to the missing person, which no doubt Mrs. Sinclair will identify. Inspector, would you be kind enough to arrange for one of your men to escort Mrs. Sinclair back home? Certainly, Mr. Holmes. Wilson? Wilson, I'll see you home, Mrs. Sinclair. Easy now. Go on, get in there. Now, this man hiding in the attic, Inspector. Oh. A more serious matter than opium, Rosetto? Anything to say? What can I say, gentlemen? I know absolutely nothing at all about this room. It is rented to this man, Boone, and is very rarely visited by me. And the bloodstains on the window, sir? I cut my hand this morning. When I opened the window, I caught it on the catch, and it started to bleed again. What about the clothes? I ain't never seen them in my life before, Governor. Never in my life. Do you take us for half-wits? This is your room. These clothes belong to a gentleman who was seen at this window only half an hour ago. I ain't never seen them in my life before. What are you looking at like that for? What are you trying to fit on me? I ain't done nothing. I ain't done nothing wrong. I ain't done nothing wrong. I swear I haven't done nothing, nothing at all. Inspector, if a medical examination confirms this man's reopened cut, his story may be true. I should not, however, confine your investigations entirely to him. Quite the Watson, what do you think of this view?
Sinclair's coat. It's very heavy. I say, Holmes, it's stuffed with coppers. And then it is murder. Yes, Watson, imagine what happened. While Boone has thrust the body through the window, suddenly he hears the police downstairs. He seizes his victim's coat, then realizes that it will float and give him away. So he stuffs the pockets full of coins and throws it into the river. And would have done the same with the rest of the clothes, but for our arrival. Excellent deduction. Now we have no choice but to look into the past of your friend Neville Sinclair. But what's the next move? Supper. Excuse us for interrupting at such a late hour, Mrs. Sinclair, but it is essential for me to continue my investigations into your husband's private papers and documents. I quite understand, Mr. Holmes. I've unlocked his desk. You and Dr. Watson will, of course, be staying with us tonight. Thank you, Mrs. Sinclair. Mr. Holmes. Mr. Holmes, in your heart of hearts, do you think Neville is alive? Uh, Kate, my dear. You mean... That your husband is dead? Yes. Murdered? I still feel he's alive. Yes, I know, but Neville and I had a mental affinity, and if he was ever in pain or danger, I would feel it, even though away from him. Some weeks ago, he had an accident in the garden, and I knew before he cried out. Even before we were married, if he was ill, I would go to him, knowing full well something had happened. I can quote dozens of occasions when Neville has been sick or hurt or worried, and each time I have known without a word or a message. Why, only three days ago, when he cut his hand shaving, I rushed upstairs, certain that something was wrong. Do you think, after all these examples, I could be ignorant of his death? Kate, you're overwrought. You must take a sedative and go to bed. Mr. Holmes, is there any... any hope? Yes. Yes, perhaps Neville is alive. Good night. Oh, I say, Holmes, how could you say such a thing, raising the poor girl's hopes? Watson, I ought to be kicked from here to Baker Street. I hold the key to the mystery. The key? Where? In the bathroom. Bathroom? Yes, look for it before you go to bed. Good night. Good morning, Mr. Holmes. Ah, good morning, Inspector. Any developments? No, none. The River Police report that nobody answering the description of Sinclair has been found for the last 48 hours. Oh, our doctor examined that beggar fellow and found his story true. So as we had no case against him, we've let him go. What? You're one material witness and you've let him go? And why not? He has a street vendor's license for selling matches. He's committed no crime. You're sure his license is up to date? Oh, that hadn't occurred to me. No, it wouldn't. I knew it, Mr. Holmes, I knew it. I've had a letter this morning. Neville is alive. May I see it? Your correspondent, Mrs. Sinclair, is feminine. Her occupation, I suspect, connected with the more fashionable dress houses in Bond Street. But how on earth could you... The envelope originates from Astley's of Bond Street. The watermark is quite discernible. The sloping characteristics of the writing, despite the efforts of disguise, clearly indicate the sex, whilst few men liberally perfume themselves with Marcy's Calcafleur. You will also observe that the back of the letters indicate that they have been cut out of a woman's fashion magazine. Well, that's most extraordinary, Mr. Holmes. On the contrary, my dear fellow, it is precisely what I expected. By the way, Inspector, what is the penalty for burglary? Why, uh, imprisonment, of course. Really? Good day, Inspector.
you talk of a holiday when we're in such danger? Uh, this is so foolish. You've gone too far with Sinclair. With Sherlock Holmes investigating, the whole matter is becoming dangerous. And I won't have any further part in it. You're too heavily involved, my dear, to try and withdraw. Besides, you should not have any regrets about Neville Sinclair. After all, he didn't have any regrets about dropping you when his inheritance made it possible for him to marry into society. I don't need you to remind me. Neville has served his purpose. That should be the end of the matter. I have not noticed any complaints about the profits. Sure, Holmes investigating. The profits lose their appeal. The risk is too high. Oh, my dear Doreen. Holmes is still searching for Sinclair's body. Why can't you stop that yapping dog before I strangle it? You know, it's time we got rid of Mr. Holmes. I'm very tired. I'll meet you tomorrow. But my dear... I, I... said I was tired. Good night. Well? I am on your trail. Tell me, why did you send that mysterious letter to Mrs. Sinclair? Letter? Oh, come, come, madam. If you wanted to disguise your identity, you should not have cut out words from a fashion magazine. You should have used some other trade paper and a less exclusive perfume. Not that it would have deceived me in the end. Since, however, you sent the letter, tell me the reason. Neville told me to. So he still lives. But what has he got to do with your friend Luzzatto? Last night I had an interesting evening examining Sinclair's desk. You'll be glad to know that the papers on your husband's murder have not been destroyed. The police, no doubt, have still kept the file open for further action. I had nothing to do with the murder. So Sinclair was the murderer. So that is why Luzzatto's blackmailing him. It wasn't, Neville, it wasn't. Luzzatto did it. Made Neville believe that he'd killed my husband in a fit of jealousy. Neville was at the bar of gold that night, and he couldn't remember anything after waking from his drug sleep. What's Luzzatto forcing him to do? I can't tell you. I can't. I saw from your letters that you once loved Sinclair. And if you help me to save him from Luzzatto, I give you my personal promise that you can leave England for good and no questions asked. I've said too much already, Mr. Holmes. There's a trap door at the back of the bar of gold that could tell strange tales of bodies in the river at night. What immunity can you give me? What protection can I expect against a man like Luzzatto? The word of Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes? We seem to have made a little mistake, Dr. Watson. Paper and pencil. What are you up to? Release me immediately or I'll have charges preferred against you for assault and kidnapping. You've had experience of the Afghan campaign, have you not, Dr. Watson? So you will know what happens to uncooperative hostages. You will write a note to Sherlock Holmes telling him to come here and alone. You can go to blazes, sir. Open this door. Open this door. Here, what are you... Open this door here, here. Come on, boys, bring it down. Will you join me in a duet, Doctor? Holmes!
Sinclair. Yes, my dear Watson. The man with the twisted lip. Ah, Inspector. We have found the missing Sinclair. He was a prisoner. Oh, congratulations, Mr. Holmes. You'll be glad to know we've got the whole gang. Unfortunately, the only person who got away was that peddler, Boone. He won't get very far, though. I've given orders for his immediate arrest. What for, Inspector? His license is out of date. The blackmail is over, Mr. Sinclair. You are completely innocent of the death of Doreen's husband. Luzato is at this moment being charged with his murder. <sighs> Thank goodness for that. You knew then of their, their hold over me? Naturally. I know also that they compelled you to act as a dope peddler and used your ability at disguise, knowing that no one would suspect a dirty street beggar. Oh, thank goodness my wife saw me at the window that day, of course. I was confused and, and frightened. When you came in, I, I pretended to be dead. The fight downstairs gave me a few minutes of grace and I became the peddler again. I began to throw my other clothes out of the window. That was how I reopened the cut on my finger. The bathroom, Watson. As soon as Mrs. Sinclair said her husband had cut his hand shaving, I knew I had the key. Mr. Sinclair, the hour is late. Yes. Don't worry that your wife will ask questions. She will keep her promise to me not to. She will be too happy to have you home. Good night, Mrs. Sinclair. Good night, Mr. Holmes, and thank you. Good night, Sinclair. Good night, Dr. Watson. 